Hi, this is Chef Janie Pendleton, and today I'm going to teach you how to make my honey cough drops. We're going to start with a very heavy gauge pan. We're going to put this on a medium high setting. We need three quarters of a cup of honey. Raw honey's better, but um, we're going to add some other things here if this is what you've got. We're going to go ahead and add a cup of sugar, three quarters of a cup of light Cairo syrup, and a cup of really hot, nearly boiling water. And we're going to put this all in our pan, and we're going to get our candy thermometer out here. And we're going to boil this all together on the stove until it reaches a hard crack stage. Crack stage, excuse me. And that's at 300 degrees here on the candy thermometer. Now you don't want to go under that. Now when you stick your candy thermometer on the side of your pan, you can move that piece, this little ball can move up and down. Set this on the side of your pan like this. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that the mercury tip here does not touch the bottom of your pan. So we're going to bring it up so it's barely off the pan. Okay? Make sure you turn this so that you can see through here what you're doing. And this will steam up and that's fine. Now whenever you're making candy, you want to make sure and take a clean rag. You want to make sure this is really clean and dry. And you want to take a clean rag and make sure there's no sugar or any kind of food uh, anything like that on the side of the pan. All right, now we're going to go ahead by turning on our stove here to a medium high heat. Got both burners here going. Now I'm just going to add my three quarters of a cup of honey. And I'll get the rest of that out here in just a second. Make sure you get it all. I'm going to add my three quarters of a cup of Cairo syrup. And we'll get all that out as well here in just a minute. I'm going to add my very hot to nearly boiling one cup of water. And I'm going to add a cup of sugar. Give this a nice stir. Remember we don't want to add any flavorings or anything like that. Now you can infuse your water with like um, oregano is really good for the um, digestive system. You can uh, infuse it with some herbal tea, tea bags when you boil it. Just be sure and put it through uh, a nice uh, piece of, a thick piece of handkerchief or cheesecloth or a very clean dish towel and strain out all the impurities out of your, out of your herb that you've boiled. So just take chamomile, whatever, chamomile tea bags, that's good. And you can infuse this with some herbs and that will help fight your infections as well. And just to keep your throat nice and clear for the, for the winter. Even if it's not hurting, these are good. Okay, now we've just taken and we're going to stir this. And we're going to stir this until this comes up to a boil. And once it starts boiling, we're going to reduce the heat just a little bit just to keep a nice, a nice simmer going. We don't, we want it boiling but we don't want it popping the sides of the size of hog's eyes like you see in gravy. You want this a nice low uh, simmer and you want it set it so it just continues to do that. Now again we're just going to make sure that our thing is in here but it's not touching the ground and you can just leave that thermometer in here. Double checking our temperatures. You don't want this up too high. Okay. I'm just going to continue to stir this until it boils. Okay. And while this is coming up to a boil, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make your cough drops. If you don't have a mold, then this is a really good trick. You can add powdered sugar into just a little pie pan like I did here. And that adds a little bit of sweetness and keeps them from sticking together. And this also does another little trick which I'm going to show you here in just a minute. You can use arrowroot powder. You can use cornstarch. Um, so what you want to do is you just, I've just got the shape of this, um, of my die dropper here. And I'm just going to take and I'm just going to make some firm impressions like this all the way around, okay? And that's how I'm going to make my die, my mold for my cough drops. And I'm just going to continue to do that all the way around. Okay, it'll start foaming, and as it foams and starts rising, the, the bubbles start rising up the side of the pan, you want to turn your heat down, and this is how it should be bubbling. You want a nice 
steady bubble. And we don't want it just bubbling, we want the temperature slowly raising. And you want to be sure and keep the sides of the pan clean with your wooden spoon. This is very important. I see how it's raising up higher and higher. We know the temperature is going up, but we're controlling that bubble. Controlling the boil. Keeping an eye. I got a little puppy here at my feet. Look at this. She's right here at my feet. I don't want her getting burned, so she's going to have to move. And this is going up about a degree every 30 seconds. And that's about right. So keep your sugar from getting burned. And you want to keep the sides of your pan clean, just like that. You don't want any sugar crystals on the side of that pan. That can ruin the clarity of your, um, of your cough drops or of your candy. Okay, we're going to turn it up a little bit more. It's not maintaining that bubble. Get back up there. We want to keep it going. Okay. Temperature still rising, and you'll notice that some of the foam is starting to dissipate. Okay, now once it gets to this stage right here, and it's just boiled for a few minutes, and we've kept the side of the pan pretty clean, and we've been able to maintain a consistent boil, you might have to kind of knock that foam back down here once in a while. Be sure, do not leave this. Come on back, girl. Come on, get back. I can't. You're being bad. <laughs> okay, get back, girl. Get back. Come on, get back. I don't want you getting burned. <laughs> She's being a little stinker. Okay, we're at uh, 225. Okay, so we're just going to leave it like that. Once in a while to keep our sugar from burning here or crystallizing on the sides we're just going to kind of go down the sides of the pan like this now right now we're not even at softball stage yet so i don't want to mess with it too much just want to kind of keep those bubbles knocked down i got to get this up to the 300 mark and when it starts going it will go quickly okay this is starting to turn a little bit of a dark brown color and we are almost at 300 degrees i'm going to tilt my pan to make sure that it's completely submersed and we're just a hair under there. You want it to reach that 300 degrees. It's very important. Okay, and we're almost there. Almost. And we're at 300 degrees. See it? Rises really quickly. Now, as we're just over a little bit over 300 degrees, we're going to take just a little bit of this from the bottom. And we're going to put this in here like that. And we're going to swirl this around like so. And it's starting to harden up. Okay, we're way over crack stage, so we need to go ahead and remove this from the heat. And let's check on this and see how we did. Oh yeah, that's getting nice and hard. Perfect. Okay, let's see if I can show this to you better. See? It's even starting the string. Matter of fact, this right here is the stage if you ever want to make decorations for cakes. But you can see here where it's getting hard. See that? Perfect. Now while it's hot, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our food coloring and our flavorings. Add a couple drops of yellow. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's talking back to you. Oh yeah, it is. To red. It's already got a nice coloring to it. And then we're going to use our metal spoon and blend in that coloring. We're going to have to pour this pretty quickly here. Nice coloring. I just like red food coloring. I mean, I like red candy, so that's just me. <laughs> Add a little strawberry or other flavoring to this right now at this stage. Okay, and in this case, I'm adding butter uh, flavored extract. Get my spoon ready. Careful there. 
It's very, very hot. You're cooking off the alcohol, by the way, so you want to be careful of fire. <laughs> and this right here is a little bit of rum extract. Put that back on the stove. We're going to continue to cook off the alcohol. And we're just going to pour it into the individual pieces, just like that. Now this one, of course, I'm doing it, fall, it falls right down into the little holes. Isn't that neat? very hot on this handle so okay it's perfect okay, my hand cooled off the handle is very hot I'm going to start on this one this right here I actually used um, cornstarch now what I like about using the other one is how it falls down into the hole and it just kind of collects into the hole. It's pretty cool to watch it. Okay. And we're going to have to do another one. Let me keep it loose. Okay, this made about three, three and a half pans of cough drops. Now, you can see here the difference of how when I poured this into the powdered sugar it all beaded and went right into the holes there was no waste at all but when I poured this into the cornstarch you can see where it didn't quite but these are still a little hot here they kind of blended in together but these right here are about done now right now is a good time to stamp these while they're still warm and here I stamped one to show you that you can kind of Make a little mark. Okay. Now what you want to do with this is you just want to take and you'll coat these when they're done. You can stick these in the refrigerator for about 20-25 minutes, an hour, you know, whatever works for you and come back and then just kind of mix them around and get them nice and coated. Shake them off and then put this in a Ziploc baggie and it's still good for next time. And of course the cornstarch, if you sift out the cornstarch and all these little pieces out of the cornstarch, the cornstarch can go back in its container as well. You can save it for your gluten-free flour mix or what have you. Coat some chicken with it, it's fine. Just as long as you get these little pieces out, that's fine. But you can see this is, you hear that? It's hardened up. That's a good thing. And you just want to store these in like an Altoids tin in your pocketbook or something here. Now, of course, you don't want to let little kids have these because they are a hard, they're like a hard candy. But, okay, now we're just going to sift them in a little sifter like this, a wire sifter. And give them a roll. And get all the impurities out, you know, all the hard chunks. And that way we can reuse our powdered sugar. Then we're going to take it over here and we're going to lay them out here on a cookie sheet that's lined with wax paper. Just like so. And we're going to let them finish cooling. Okay, and here you can see the difference. These were the powdered sugar coated cough drops. And these were the cornstarch coated cough drops. And let's get a little piece here and you'll be able to hear it crack. Let's get a little bigger piece than that. There we go. See? So it did crack. It worked. And I'm happy with the results. I'll probably like the sweeter ones here better, but for, um, for the actual scratchy throat and you don't feel like the extra sugar, then cornstarch does work as well. You just get a little bit more of these little pieces in here that you have to break apart. There we go. Just need to snap apart if they're together. Like these two right here, just snap them apart. And there you go. 
And there you have it. This is Chef Janie Pendleton on how to make my homemade honey and rum and butter flavored, it's kind of a butterscotch flavored uh, honey cough drop. Enjoy. Live feed from Janie's Kitchen. Do, 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 do.